So you're thinking about getting a new electric vehicle or you just bought one and you're wondering, do I need a dedicated EV charger at home? Well, the short answer is no, but also definitely yes. I'll explain everything after the splash animation. Did it play yet? It didn't. I'm just gonna keep going then. Well, am I back? Okay, welcome to another episode of EV Basics powered by Ytricity. Check out our full playlist of videos designed to help you understand the sometimes confusing world of electric vehicles. So if you own an EV, do you need a charger at home? Well, as I mentioned, the answer is no, you do not have to have one. But if you live somewhere that a charger can be installed, you're almost certainly going to want one. We here at EV Pulse firmly believe you are living your best EV life when you can charge at home and wake up every day with more than enough range to get you where you need to go. Public charging should be the exception, not the rule. That said, let's consider all your options as well as their pros and cons, starting with a free solution. Many new EVs come standard with level one chargers. These plug into your typical everyday 120 volt household outlets, meaning you can use them just about anywhere. Unfortunately though, these chargers are not very powerful. They only get you around three to maybe five miles of range per hour, and that's terrible. Here's a for instance that proves my point. When properly equipped, the Tesla Model Y SUV offers up to 330 miles of range. If you come home with, say, 30 miles in reserve, level one charging could take 100 hours to fully juice up the battery to replenish the 300 miles of range that got used up. <laughs> That's four days, and I hope you don't have anywhere else to go for the rest of the week. Now, depending on where you live, you could rely on public charging instead. You can level two or DC fast charge at stations rather than at home. And this is what EV drivers that live in apartments or other places without a garage have to do. Now, either option is way faster than going the level one route, but there are some downsides. When public charging, you almost always pay more per kilowatt hour than you would at home, unless it's a free perk provided by your municipality. And point number two, DC fast charging too frequently can negatively impact battery life. This is something many vehicle manufacturers caution against, so use it sparingly if you can. And finally, even so-called fast charging can take a long time, up to two hours in some slow charging EVs. So don't buy an EV thinking you can treat Electrify America like a gas station, that's not how it works. Ultimately, the best all-around solution is having a level two charger installed in your carport or garage. These are powerful enough to fully replenish an EV's battery overnight, you pay less per kilowatt hour, your vehicle is nice and safe at home, and you can be doing something more useful while charging, like sleeping, something you probably do most days. Hit like on this video if you're a fan of sleep. Still, nothing's perfect, and there are a couple downsides to level two charging. As we mentioned in another episode of EV Basics, chargers and their installation can be a costly investment. And for those in apartments or condos, installing a charger may be entirely out of the question unless your garage provides access to a NEMA 1450 or 1430 outlet like a clothes dryer would plug into. Some EVs come with combination chargers that support both 120 volt level one charging as well as 240 volt level two charging. These typically have plug ends you can easily swap out. And this is a good solution that can save you the expense of buying a hard mounted level two charger, but you still might have to pay an electrician to run a 240 volt line to where it's needed. If you already have an outlet occupied by a dryer, smart circuit splitters like this one by SplitVolt allow you to charge your EV and dry your clothes without overloading the circuit. To decide whether you need a charger, we've developed a list of questions you can answer. But first, ask yourself this. Would you prefer to recharge your EV without plugging in at all? Well, of course you would. You connect to the internet without a cable and you can wirelessly juice up your smartphone. Why do you still have to plug in your EV? Well, actually you don't. Wytricity makes this episode of EV Basics possible and their wireless charging technology makes electric vehicle ownership simpler and far more convenient. 
Just park and your EV starts charging automatically. That's basically it. There are no bulky cables or clunky connectors to wrestle with, which can be a real hassle. This system is also safer than plugging in and it is just as efficient as level two charging with a cable. You are absolutely going to want Wytricity wireless charging in your next EV, so follow the link on screen or in the description box below for more information. To answer my initial question, at the end of the day, you don't need a dedicated electric vehicle charger at home, but let's reframe that. If you can, should you install a charger at home? Well, ultimately that's a personal decision, but here are some additional questions you can ask yourself to arrive at the right answer for you. Does the place where you work, attend school, or otherwise spend the bulk of your day provide free or low cost EV charging? On average, do you drive fewer than 20 miles a day? If so, maybe charging from a household outlet is just fine. Do you have an additional conventional vehicle in your household for times when your driving needs outpace your ability to recharge quickly enough? To the point of affordability, does the EV you're shopping for provide discounted charger installation with a partner company? Chevy, for example, currently offers a deal to Bolt buyers. Do you qualify for local or federal incentives to offset the cost of a charger and its installation? But your time is an equally valuable resource. Are you able to wait, in worst case scenarios, hours to charge? Public chargers are still a limited resource and the number of EVs on the roads is on the rise. So if you plan on primarily DC fast charging, are you leasing your vehicle? If so, the burden of poor future battery life won't be something you necessarily have to contend with. Depending on how you answered these questions, you should have a better idea of whether or not installing a home charger makes any sense. Again, you can get away with using the 120 volt level one charger that came with your EV, or you can rely on public charging networks, but I've gotta tell you, for the best ownership experience, plan on getting a level two charger installed in your garage or carport. That's our recommendation here at EV Pulse. Now I recommend you go and watch this video, which will give you even more information on EV charging speeds and the different plugs you should be aware of. Thanks for watching EV Basics. Hit subscribe if you haven't already to get more electric vehicle reviews, news, and tips you can use. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs>